Tennessee and Missouri kick it off in Como. Spooky place to play, man. Spooky, spooky, spooky. I know Halloween's already passed. Tennessee and Mizzou, what you think, Joe? I know that you're you're teetering on the fence here. So I, I've been I've been thinking about this, and I, I said this leading in. You, you brought to the table here that Luther Burton hasn't been practicing, and his availability is is so critical for Missouri's performance and, and how they play in any game. He he is the most valuable player in the SEC, arguably, because how much of a difference between when he's on the field and when he's not on the field, it's pretty stark. He is a fantastic receiver. He's very explosive. If he's in this game, I think it's a no-brainer. I keep coming back to the fact that I feel like Tennessee has not finished games in their most important matchups. I was, as much as Missouri fans think I was critical of their performance against Georgia, I was still impressed with the way that they played in that game. It was a massive, massive challenge to play against Georgia and to keep it close like that, to almost come back, amazing fight that we saw from them. I think that with that in mind, my gut is telling me I got to go with the team that has stepped up to the plate, stepped up to the challenge more than the other. And that for me, it's Missouri. And you know what? You're saying that they're not a very physical team and you know they're not like Texas Samurai. Right? You, you said that early on at the beginning of the show. You, you said that they're, okay, let me rephrase. You said that the teams that have beaten Tennessee, Missouri's not built like that. That's what you said to me. They're not. They still have a good offensive line, and they still they weren't physical. Okay, sorry, I, I misquoted the, you. The teams, the teams that beat Tennessee are the teams that like under at Florida and Alabama, the okay. more physical football teams. I misquoted you. Missouri's offensive line has been very under-talked about this season. I think that Javon Foster is a great offensive tackle. That whole group has been good. And their defensive line, they're 15th in team sacks. They're getting after the quarterback, facing a quarterback who notoriously holds the ball way too long. Yeah, but that secondary has been suspect for Tennessee. That is true. That is true. Here's the thing, okay? So I do think Tennessee offensively, stay just stay with me, gets a little bit of a bad rap. Let me tell you why. Because I'm watching film today, Joe, and, I, and I'm watching the last couple of games of Tennessee. And I'm like, wait a minute. This team isn't bad offensively. They're not, they're not bad at all. Now, no, they didn't finish against Alabama, but Joe, here's the truth. Nobody's finishing the second half against Alabama. LSU can't do it with – and look at what that offense is in Baton Rouge, okay? Like, it's not like it's just a shitty offense. There's no one – total offense in the country. Joe, they are a top 15 defense – in or top 15 offense in total offense. They're number 13. I did not put the stats together, and the team didn't put the stats together because they put the stats together for me. I just sit here and watch the film, okay? 13th in total, in total offense. Passing offense, they have not been great, and I will concede, but stay with me. I'm going to come back to that. They're 58th. Third down offense, 27th in the country, both in offense and defense. Number three rushing offense in the country. How many, okay, how many, Joe, uh, military academies do we have in college football that run the ball every single down? They're historically the ones that normally lead yeah. Rushing offense because they run on every play. No, it's Tennessee that is up there more than anybody. But the thing for me is, Joe, I was like, okay, well, if if they're just running the football, playing a little bit of keep away, they're top 25 in scoring offense with at 22. I think teams have been sleeping on Tennessee because of the simple nature that Joe Milton, before the year, everybody's like, He's going to throw it all over the place. Joe Milton's got the biggest arm since John Elway. John Elway doesn't have a bigger arm than Joe Milton. And everybody thought he was going to come in here and he's going to throw it all over the place. Joe, Josh Heupel's got a really good football team. They were young early in the year, went on the road to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. They never win there. They lost. I don't think that – I think we're putting a little too much on a team who has been down – for so long that they still have to rebuild a little bit. Man, I like them going on the road. They're a tested and tried football team. I'm going Tennessee. 
I and what bothers me with Missouri, okay, is Luther's injury does not help this case. Now, passing defense, Tennessee has been a little bad, but you know who else has been yeah. kind of bad? Missouri. Missouri. Well, well, I said that last week. That was why I didn't have much of an expectation because they got cooked against Kansas State a little bit. They got cooked a little bit against Georgia. It's it's concerning. It's really concerning. Those corners have not been good. Tennessee, okay, I think might be able to do something that Georgia didn't a week ago, maybe getting after Cody Schrader a little bit, stopping the run a little bit better. Because I think that they do have better athletes on the outside, Deans, backers, Pierce, and the boys. I mm. do think that they can help contain Cody Schrader, okay? I think that's one thing that they'll do that Georgia can't. But, man, I think Tennessee has everything to play for. Because if Ole Miss finds a way to go into, into Georgia and upsets them, next week we got a matchup between Georgia and Tennessee for the SEC East. And my goodness, would that be fantastic? Well, that's not going to happen. So regardless, it doesn't matter in that situation. But yeah, um, you never know. By the way, when USC won all those games in a row, it was the 27th game that they lost. In a, like they, they were oh. in a, Georgia also there. How about them apples? Well, I... That would just be dumb luck if that ended up happening. But it's exactly it's how it always happens when teams tie mm, each other. Wasn't it like true. UConn? Remember when UConn women's basketball broke like the uh, most wins yeah. freak, and then the very next day they lost? <laughs> it was something like that. Yeah, it was something yeah, like so that. Dumb. Well, the, the longest winning streak is in the 50s. It was Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, Notre Dame broke that, by the way. Fun, fun fact, Notre Dame broke no that. No one cares. Uh, screw you. Uh, I'm still, though, hyper-focused on one thing, Blake, and it, it's what I just said a second ago. I feel as though Joe Milton, when placed into situations where he has to face off with formidable pass rushes and defensive lines with talent, he has not stepped up to the challenge. He is a very good athlete. He runs the ball very well, and and you know we, we kind of had ourselves a little bit of a debate in the open about our evaluation of quarterbacks. I'll tell you what, man, he's a great runner. I, I'm very impressed with the way that he runs and the football. And very physical. But the attrition of the football game against Alabama after they had a ton of success running the ball, eventually he was put into situations where he did have to throw. He was put into situations where the run game wasn't totally available and he had to drop back and, and read the field in front of him. And what we witnessed happen is Joe Milton's internal clock is one of the worst in the SEC and in, in, in the Power Five. He just does not have a, a good sense of when to either exit the pocket or get rid of the football. Alabama's defense is a lot better than Missouri's, and they teed off on him. I get that. But Missouri still has a nice group of guys, 15th in the country in team sacks, and they can put themselves in a position here to get after Joe Milton, cause him problems all day. It all. This is one of those teams. It all comes down to one guy. One guy. If he does not play well, they will lose this football game. Well, if like he is protected, the they'll country, be fine. Though. That's that's every quarterback in the country now. Not necessarily. I think that there's a name good a amount team, of name a team that in the top ten that if their quarterbacks are playing bad, they either Ohio um, State. Well, Joe, the games that he play has played bad. They have lo they have almost lost. But Notre their defense has bailed them. The, their defense has Correct. bailed them out. And Michigan, Correct. their defense bails them out. And, and Tennessee's defense didn't against Alabama. They let Milrow it. throw it all over them. I understand what you're saying. What I'm just trying to get at here is that he yeah. is his mistakes are enough to completely take his team out of the game. Don't sleep on the the volunteers. Don't do it. We'll see. Rocky top, you'll always be. Again, I'm the off season. You asked me how many fight songs can I home sweet home to me. In the Go off season, we're gonna do this. Rocky top. Woo!